See those obstacles in the departure path? See that short runway? Well, this is why pilots practice short field takeoffs. And now you'll get a chance to practice one yourself. Let's run through an abbreviated takeoff checklist and prepare the airplane for a short field departure. First, let's make sure those brakes are on. Our cow flaps are open and the mixture is full rich. I'd say we're ready to go. Let's apply full power with the brakes on. When the power reaches 29 inches of manifold pressure, release the brakes for departure and keep the airplane in the middle of the runway. As soon as we've established a positive rate of climb, let's get that gear up. There's 85 knots. Rotate to a best angle of climb pitch of 18 degrees nose up and climb at 92 knots, the best angle of climb speed. It looks like you're clear of the obstacles. Lower the nose and climb at 105 knots, which is the best rate of climb speed. When you reach 2,000 feet, a good maneuvering altitude, that would be a good time to reduce the manifold pressure to 25 inches and the RPM to 2,500 for a climb. Slow down. Okay, continue climbing at 105 knots to 2,500 feet. At 2,500 feet, we'll turn crosswind to a heading of 340 degrees. Let's use 20 degrees of bank for all our maneuvers. Slow down. As soon as you lower the nose to level out, reduce your manifold pressure to 19 inches, then turn downwind to a heading of 250 degrees so as to keep yourself close to the runway. You're coming up on 3,500 feet, so let's begin the level out. Bank the wings less. Because we're operating in a hilly environment, let's lower the gear for landing when established on the downwind leg. You're too high, descend. This will help slow the airplane down and keep you from traveling too far from the airport. While you can see the runway in your GPS, I still want you to look for the runway by pressing the num lock key and then pressing keypad button four or use your joystick's hat switch. If you need to, dip the wing if it will help you see the runway. Turn left more. Let's slow the airplane down in preparation for lowering flaps when we're abeam or even with the runway threshold. Begin by reducing your power to 15 inches and holding 3,500 feet. Let the airplane slow down to 110 knots. Add enough power to hold 110 knots at 3,500 feet, which will be about 18 inches of manifold pressure. As long as our speed is below 152 knots, we can add approach flaps. So let's do that when you are abeam the runway. Make sure you hold 3,500 feet. I want you to continue on the downwind leg until the runway is 45 degrees behind the left wing. Use your keypad or hat switch to look out the rear left window to find the runway. Feel free to use your GPS movie map to help determine this position too. You're too low. Climb. When you're in position, turn base leg to a heading of 160 degrees. Because there are hills out there, I want you to hold altitude until you are established on the base leg.
Okay, reduce your power to idle, add full flaps, and begin a descent at 110 knots. At this point, the science of flying becomes more of an art. I want you to check for the runway using your keypad, hat switch, or moving map. You'll need to align yourself with runway 7. When you turn on to final, I want you to use an approach speed of 97 knots. Now is a good time to run through that gump checklist. Let's start our turn to final now. At this point, you should begin slowing the airplane down to 97 knots and trim for a stabilized descent. Slow down. At this point, you want to pitch to maintain 97 knots and adjust your power to control your glide path. Your objective is to clear the terrain on the approach and put the airplane down on the beginning of the runway. Speed up. Speed up. Reduce any power that's still applied and use maximum braking to slow this airplane down. Congratulations, you've just made a great short field landing. You deserve a prize. Guess what? Come into the flight school because I've got a sweater for you. Yep, it's a cashmere sweater.